this summer will mark three years since we finally met in real life. He'd been asking me the same question for a long time. Only I had never answered yes until that day. Stephen Hurley, the visionary and catalyst behind Voice Ed Radio, asked me to start a podcast of my own. At the time, I had been on the panel of the weekly On Ed Mentor Show, but a podcast of my own, a podcast. If I had the tools, I didn't know how to use them. And then there he was sitting across the table from me at the Union Social Eatery and I felt inspired. I suddenly suggested a show based on a project from my class. He looked at me, smiled and asked, can I be your first guest? Since then, I have recorded over 100 guests from across education, some even in this room right now, who share what's making a difference in their classrooms, their schools, their boards or districts, via their books, their podcasts, or their professional work. The show is called The Personal Playlist Podcast, and I joyfully refer to it as the P3. Guests tell their stories by unpacking three songs, one that's nostalgic, a throwback, one that reflects their identity, and one that lifts them up, picks them up, inspires, or motivates. Through that process, we learn a lot about who they are and get key insights into their lived experiences and accomplishments. I am not a musician, or even an audiophile. I can sort of sing, but not really according to my daughters. And yet, as far back as I can recall, music has been a part of me. When I was eight years old, I started helping out on weekends at my father's stores. He owned a franchise of A&A Records, not the once iconic one that was in downtown Toronto, but in several malls across the Golden Horseshoe. That's my dad, circa 1978 at the Burlington Mall store, the guy in between Darth Vader, Cheryl Teagues, and Sean Cassidy. <laughs> Being a record store family for me was about access to music, posters, cool t-shirts, and other music paraphernalia. But being in the stores, fully surrounded by sound, was something else. I was first paid in 45s and tasked with bagging the albums. When I was in high school, I started working evenings and weekends as a part-timer, alphabetizing stock and locating items for customers. I would immerse myself in the music, playing the top records, and then tapes, and then CDs, sometimes even acting them out for unsuspecting shoppers. My parents' basement still wears the remnants of a life in music, with cardboard stand-ups like the Beatles and Cyndi Lauper. There are Zeppelin and Aerosmith flags defining space and everything from Streisand to Springsteen on the walls. When I became a teacher, I started using music to help my middle school students discover literary tools through the lyrics of their favorite songs. I unknowingly began to develop what would become an entire teaching approach I call building outside the blocks, Bob. I added project after project to my repertoire, which evolved along with my practice. But music, music was a constant. When I was returning to middle school after my third and final maternity leave, I had planned a series of building outside the blocks projects for the school year. Each one layered on the other, giving students multiple opportunities to develop several learning and curricular skills over time. They also invited my students to explore and share different aspects of themselves using a variety of mediums. One of those bobs was called a personal soundtrack. Now, all of my projects encourage creativity and inspire learning. But seeing student testimonials through a video that was recorded on their experience of the personal soundtrack showed how uniquely meaningful it was. So, I've been sharing this project that I now call the P3 through workshops, presentations, and my podcast. And it's really making a difference for others. At first, it wasn't. I would present on it in a workshop, and people would say, wow, cool project. And that was it. And then, something changed when people started to experience it on my show. So many guests, and even audience members, have been motivated to use the format in their places of work. From staff meetings to icebreakers, the P3 is a fantastic tool. 
It's especially transformative, however, as the personal playlist project. Teachers from around the corner to across the continent and beyond have been sharing the impact of the P3 in their classrooms. Students sign up to present, only a few on a given day, giving them the opportunity to have a shared experience while also giving the stage to each individual. It allows students to connect to themselves as they tell the stories of their favorite childhood memories or their struggles. They share the songs that pump them up to face challenges or fuel them to keep going when they feel the world has got them down. Creates a shared experience and a community because a community gets built that supports risk-taking so students can share their vulnerabilities without feeling overly vulnerable. They actually feel empowered to own their narratives while connecting to global themes and using the global competencies. Here are a few examples. Learners like those in Ramona Mahark's developmental ed congregated high school class were loving the project so much they were too eager to wait for their actual due dates to present their P3s. Those just learning the language, like an ELL expert author and consultant Carol Salva's classes, could use English words to describe songs in their native language. Or students with limited or interrupted schooling could use the platform to share why they left their countries of origin, or the songs that comforted them on their journey. Students from as young as Ariana Lambert's grade four class could use this project to consider topics like children's rights and equity, and themes like love, belonging, and grit. Through the P3, students spend engaged time, mostly at home, analyzing what these songs mean in their lives. Music is powerful. Jennifer Cohen wrote me, no project ever has allowed me to learn about my students so well so quickly. My students learned about each other. They empathized with what others had gone through, celebrated the heartfelt stories of each other's past, and respected each other. Last year, I facilitated the P3 in my grade eight homeroom class, and we learned so much from and about each other. I did it again this year. Here is a small sample of feedback from my students. Nilifer wrote, every song choice had a meaning and story behind them. I was able to express myself in a way that I felt comfortable doing, and I felt confident to share another piece of my identity. It's, I feel like we were all creating class memories, because these presentations would cause us to bond by sharing our thoughts and just having loads of fun. I actually captured one of those moments in the middle of a P3 presentation. My entire class just erupted in song. If you've ever taught this age group, you know, that's a big deal. Maria shared, the P3 was a wonderful experience. To start off with, I felt so close to each person in the class. It's amazing to hear the details about everyone's life, but when I presented, it was a whole other story. I felt so proud, so accomplished, and most of all, I felt respected for who I am. Hirad wrote, the personal playlist project was a phenomenal project that I'm glad I had the chance to take part in. As I was searching for a song that resembled my identity the most, I realized that this process helped me learn more about myself. I can confidently say that this was simply one of the most fun projects I have ever completed. The P3 can open the minds and hearts of even those students who are not into music. It can do so much. Over the last two years in my York Region classroom, students other than English have shared songs in Russian, Farsi, Hebrew, Arabic, Korean, Japanese, Cantonese, and Mandarin. The P3 can help move culturally responsive pedagogy from theory to practice. After the first year of my podcast, Stephen Hurley hosted my anniversary episode. 
Besides hearing amazing feedback from former podcast guests who lent their voices as a surprise, so many beautiful surprises, I got a little emotional at times, Stephen asked me to share my P3. This really is a critical thinking task. In the creation of these three songs, it's a snapshot of you, who you are and what you want to share about yourself in that moment. My nostalgic song is so much a part of my childhood. I would often perform songs from the movie for dinner guests. And the memory of seeing Greece in the theater when we still stood up for the national anthem before we watched a film. Do any of you guys remember that? Right? Okay. It's a strong one brought on with the opening bars of You're the One That I Want. My identity song was first introduced to me by a student who was sure I would love it. I did. I used it for a self-esteem initiative I was running at my former school we called You Are Awesome. Yeah. Any student could contribute to a playlist of songs, you know, for the morning to start everybody's day in a good way. But I also recorded every class across the entire school singing along to What I Am from Will I Am and the Sesame Street Gang. This song really helps you celebrate your unique qualities and puts the onus on you to live your purpose. My identity as a mother and teacher, a meacher as my daughter's coined, is perfectly encapsulated in this song. Well, I hear this song a lot. It never fails to pick me up. Sir Duke by Stevie Wonder is the theme song for my show. Music is a world within itself, yet it speaks to us in a universal language. That's astounding. The Personal Playlist project, like all of my projects, is personalizing as opposed to personalized. The simple framework is provided, and yet everybody and anybody can bring to this task whatever it is or whoever it is that they are. They're universally designed, individually constructed, easily accommodating and modifiable. So many skills, so many layers, the P3 plays to them all. People listen to the educators who come on my show each week, not just because they're great educators, but because of their stories. Our shared humanity connects us through narrative, and music is an incredible path to worlds and wonderings beyond the classroom. Sunil Singh, author of Pie of Life and co-author of Math Recess, tweeted that the P3 entails reflections about learning and life through the magical vessel that is music. Whether you're an educator or a student, connection is key to learning. As Daniel Pink teaches us, human beings have an innate inner drive to be autonomous, self-determined, and connected to one another. Projects like this really help to foster that. In a world of increasing isolation and disconnection, going one-to-one -one can mean more than one device to one learner. Projects like this really make a difference because they give each person a place to tell their story a space to be their real, authentic selves, and a time to shine. This is something I believe every person deserves to experience, and school should be a place for that. We can use music to see and celebrate each individual learner while also building skill, autonomy, and community in intimate and meaningful ways. In minimal class time, we can broaden and deepen learning using people's lives and what matters to them. Music is a way in and a way out for people. It's an incredible opportunity that we can use in the classroom to invite everyone to see and be themselves, to share their stories, and to feel the power of connection. One P3, one project, one person at a time. Play it forward. Thank you. Thank you.